Welcome back and in this video I want to step through how DynamoDB handles encryption. Now this is something you'll need to understand at a high level for all of the AWS study streams and in the real world. If you're studying for the AWS security specialty it's especially important. So let's jump in and get started. Now to help you understand how DynamoDB protects your data consider this architecture. We have a table here in the middle and let's assume that it's storing sensitive animal data for the Animals for Life organization. To the left of that we have the DynamoDB endpoint and this is the API endpoint where all accesses to this table move through. Then on the left at the top we have a DynamoDB user using either the CLI, the console UI or the API. At the bottom left we have an instance of the DynamoDB encryption client and don't worry if you don't know what that is I'll talk about it in a second. Now the first thing that I want to step through is that regardless of how DynamoDB is being accessed, the communication between whatever is using the product and the DynamoDB endpoint is using HTTPS. This means that whatever the data is, it's wrapped in a layer of encryption, a HTTPS tunnel. From the perspective of the outside world, whatever is inside the tunnel is not visible. If you're connecting to DynamoDB using the console, the CLI or API, you're generally going to have plain text inside the tunnel. So in this example, plain text data about animals. Now the DynamoDB encryption client is a software library that enables you to include client-side encryption in your applications. This is different to DynamoDB encryption which I'll be covering next. This encryption client is something you include in your applications. It means that your plain text data is encrypted into ciphertext before transit. This means AWS have no exposure at any point to your actual data. It's encrypted before transit. So even inside the tunnel there's only ciphertext. Now why this matters is that between the DynamoDB endpoint and the table itself, the HTTPS tunnel is stripped away, leaving only what's inside of it, which means either plain text if you use the CLI console or API, or ciphertext if you use the DynamoDB encryption client. Now this is true regardless of how you configure DynamoDB encryption. Now in terms of DynamoDB encryption itself, let's get one thing out of the way. All DynamoDB tables are encrypted at rest. There's no longer an option to not use encryption at rest. The only configuration that's required is to optionally customize how this encryption is done. Now you have three main choices to make when it comes to configuring encryption within DynamoDB. The first is to just accept the defaults. And if you do this, encryption happens using an AWS owned KMS key. You don't see this within your account and you can't configure it, but also you're not charged for it, so that's it, nice and simple. You can also choose to customise this and choose to use an AWS managed KMS key. Now you can see this within your account, it will be prefixed with AWS forward slash and then the service name. You can audit its usage within CloudTrail, but as it's AWS managed, you won't be able to customise the key policy. Finally, you can choose to use a customer managed KMS key. Now this is visible within your account, you can also audit its usage and you can customise the key policy, something that's needed for things like cross account usage or if you have specific organizational requirements. Now whatever you decide, because a DynamoDB table is encrypted, then this means any indexes of that table, any streams, any backups, and any global tables are also encrypted. So that's the encryption architecture. Now let's review some considerations. Firstly, you cannot use a customer managed key with DynamoDB Accelerator. Next, any local or global secondary index Indexes use the same key as the table. Backups also use that same key and any restores require that same key to be initiated, but restored tables can use different encryption settings. If you use DynamoDB tables with transactions, then customer managed keys do work, but a temporary copy is stored using an AWS owned key. 
data in Stream still have a 24 hour lifetime even when a key is disabled. If you do use customer managed keys and if they're disabled or inaccessible for 7 days then a table is backed up and archived and you'll need to reactivate that key in order to restore it. So that's everything that I wanted to cover at a high level about DynamoDB encryption. At this point though go ahead and complete the video and when you're ready I look forward to you joining me in the next.